Hi, Jamie Davis, the Pod Medic here. We're here at EMS World Expo 2014, and I'm excited because I have the folks from Emergency Products and Research coming in, and my good friend Jason. How you doing, bud? I'm doing great. Thanks, Jamie. It's great to have you on. You came by and said, hey, we went, got some things we want to talk to you about. Do you have a slot? And I was happy that we actually did have an opening in the schedule. Uh, some people had, weren't able to get in because of weather, and we had an open slot. Right. So I'm cool. um, so excited. And you have some really cool stuff to show off. <laughs> we do. We do. We're um, actually we're really proud this year. Actually, we have a number of products we're showcasing, um, three of which I brought today to kind of talk to you about a little bit about. So, so let's talk about this little tourniquet here because this is a basic tourniquet device that is cost effective, yep, easy to apply, and and something that can be put just about anywhere in, in any kind of first aid setting. That's exactly right. So, we really just took it down to keep it simple, stupid, right? You know, um, and just made it so it's easily portable. So it, it fits into a package just like that. Um, we developed this new quick cravat material um, associated with the Mustang project, and I'll explain it here a little bit, um, that basically allows us just to basically to wrap it around twice. Um, you use your torsion device uh, as your, your two windlass. Take your two zip ties that are actually taped on here conveniently. Locks that in place, so it's actually locked right straight in place. So when you need to, if you need to adjust it at any time, you basically just take it out of those loops. You can transition up and down. Really cost effective, very easy to use, comes in uh, with a really nice instruction sheet inside. Um, we've done some pretty neat videos on it, so I would encourage people to go to our YouTube channel as well and I'll, I'll provide that to you later and on. And we'll have a link right below the screen here to show you where that is as yep. well. Yep. Excellent. So um, that's really cool. Yeah, it's it's great. And it's so it's, simple. And that's that's the thing that I, I love is you know, people come up with all these gadgety things that, you know, are the latest, greatest, you know, innovation, and yet something as simple as this. Going back to basics and keeping it very simple right. is just the, actually, I think, a better tool. Yep, it is, and it's amazing. We, we weren't sure how it would be received because it seems so simple, if you will. Um, we designed it originally for Homeland Security um, and in FEMA CERT teams. That's really where we saw it, and we really we never expected the, the reception to be as great as it has. And to be quite honest, I'm anxious to see these in every stocking in, uh, Christmas <laughs> at time. Christmas time. Oh, you know? wow. So well, I think this might happen, and we're, we're, uh, we're working hard. So what else do you have for me? Um, the uh, real quickly, the uh, we have this Mustang traction splint. Uh, the Mustang traction splint is the we released this officially in June. Uh, the Mustang traction splint is a uh, splint that was developed for special operations use. Um, it is nine ounces. You can see it fits uh, into pretty much anything. Uh, it is designed to go into uh, a pack with relative ease. Uh, we have uh, the biggest thing about this is versatility. I think that would be the one word if you ask me to use would be versatility. Uh, versati the versatility is that we can actually do this uh, to reduce uh, femur fractures. We can use it to reduce uh, humeral fractures. Um, it takes a relatively little space. There's no extension beyond the foot. So it's really good for air medical transport. Oh, excellent. Uh, so you don't have that kicking out of the, the traction, the rest of the traction right. splint for what, six to eight inches exactly. below the foot? Exactly, exactly. So you're not disqualifying patients that really need to be transported with critical needs. Um, we think about technical rescue. Um, it's really, we. I mean, as far as uh, urban search and rescue, uh, search and rescue teams, wilderness rescue, um, we're now starting to see this, the popularity in the street. So, um, but, uh, so it's really nice. It's, uh, I mean, again, something that really you need to see to understand. But you've got a video on We've that. got I'm videos sure. on that too. All right, so, so we'll pull that up. And yep. actually I'll pull some of the video segments so we'll be, people will have been able to see some of that while we're talking here. So yep. that'll be cool. Um, and then you have, finally have this, and this is actually the thing that I was so excited about. Sure. Was um, taking a look at this um, this cleaning device you have here, the AmbuStat. Yeah, so we, we're calling it the AmbuStat. AmbuStat um, and Am Ambu, if you will, for ambulance. Um, we. Yeah, as we all know, we got scared in the last few weeks with regard to this Ebola stuff and how that's going to affect us and how we man manage it, um, keep it, you know, clean our ambulances, clean our environments. So we came up with a, we did a lot of research on this real quickly. Uh, we were asked to present, we're presenting next week uh, in, in the Beltway, um, and we're going to prove a concept. But we had to come up with a solution that was, one, easily deployable, two, cost effective, and three, did not require a whole lot of technological know-how. There's other systems that are out there um, that you find at least two dozen of them, but the problem is that they're expensive. They're expensive and they require a lot of technical know-how training to use. Mm -hmm. um, so we wanted something that, we wanted to be able to introduce something that you could use every day. Uh, what we learned from this is actually relatively disturbing. Um, as a pre-hospital care provider, as we all are, right? 
it's, you know, we like to think of ourselves as being responsible and clean and hygienic, but, but the truth of the matter is we're not. We're not. We're humans, right? And by and you, human, have a, but, you have a, a video that's playing over in your booth right. from the London Ambulance Service, and they, they actually cultured their ambulances, and it, how many units did they take I, out I, of service? If I remember correctly, it's 900. So 900 ambulances were taken out of service because they were just not fit for service. Um, they were too dirty. Too dirty. Oh, my too goodness. Too dirty. And, um, and I think the, the word was embarrassing. So... We, uh, so now we're, we're, we're going into a new chapter of our life where we, again, we're scared by something, right? We're going to get scared and we're going to forget about it soon. But we've been tasked by some of the, the, the country's largest companies um, involved in sterilization and sanitization um, to actually champion this and make sure that we, nobody forgets about it this time. Um, there's, you know, we have a reasonable expectation in certain environments to, to expect that they're going to be clean. And expect that they're going to be somewhat sterile. Mm -hmm. And to be honest, Jamie, it's, just, it's, it's frightening, to be quite honest. You know, um, to think that we're going to go into an emergency room or an urgent care center or a pharmacy, you know, and you're going to think, oh, this should be a really clean place. And it's, it's, what we're learning is it's not. Mm -hmm. But so what we did is we've come up with a solution that is very cost effective, uh, easy to use. Um, we've found the right solutions uh, using hydrogen peroxide and parasitic acid uh, together in a means of actually do, delivering a fog. Um, we, we so it's kind of almost like the the bug fogger that's that you exactly would right. use in your home to, to kill all the to kill all the little insects that are driving you nuts, right. and you fog your house. Um, this actually fogs the enclosed space of the ambulance. That's exactly right. So wow, um, we're we're going to have a lot of proof of concept going on here in the next week or so, um, and then we're going to have some cultures coming out of that. So we'll we'll know how effective we actually are. Um, but we believe, based on all the scientific evidence and all the support we have to this right now, that we're going to be extremely effective in being able to inoculate an ambulance. So, and we think that, let's say, the hypothetical I've been using in the booth is you have an influenza patient, you come back off the call, you're back in the station, we should be going through the basic wipe down using bleach or whatever it is we use. Um, and you want to make sure you at least use copious amounts, right, and allow it to sit so right. you actually have good contact time. And then you want to clean that out. And then, so you've taken care of everything that you can see. Mucus, fecal matter, urine, blood. Um, and you've taken care of all that stuff. And now you have to deal with the things that we cannot see, the invisible, right? So that's where this comes into, is the things that you can't reach. The places we, we don't, we, you know, we haven't addressed. The things we, you know, the things we're not thinking about. That's what this is for. Um, you basically just take your bags, suspend them from the ceiling. Um, you walk in, you basically fog the inside of the ambulance, close all the doors up, go about your business, write your charts, right? Prepare for the next call. And by the time you come back, you just ventilate the ambulance out, about, let it air out a little bit, and you're back in service. And we want it to be that easy. But we want it to be so easy that you can do this on a recurring basis. You know, hypothetically, we really would like to see it after every call, right? Um, if not weekly, you know, yeah. but, but frequently. 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 And and some, on some regular basis, which right. we're not doing now. We know that we're not doing it now. Exactly. We're not doing a real thorough cleaning of our units. Maybe in some places, not even annually. Right. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. So, but we're finding, and I'm really, really proud of our, our, our country right now in the, sac in the fact that they, they're really taking a stance. And I think they're, they've, they've seen what the UK has done, and we're ready to follow their lead in the sense that we're gonna charge the states, I hope, and all the counties, so actually that they will they will culture their ambulances and hold those ambulances accountable for the cleanliness. Because the truth of the matter is unless we have a proper incentive in place, right. we're just by nature, we're just not we, we just don't do the right thing as yeah. we should. Um, and, and it's just a matter of being a human. I mean yeah. I know I'm flawed. You know, I'm not perfect, you know, and I know I have those calls where I'm really tired and, you know, I hate to just have to go out there and do it, but you do. You have to do it. It's, it's good for you. It's good for everybody. Um, so I hope we're going to be able to take this, be a part of the next generation and start a good track of, you know, doing what we're supposed to do and being responsible and reducing healthcare costs, reducing infectious, you know, components in our environment. So I'm um, really proud of my company for actually standing up and taking on the challenge, um, allowing me to have the resources to do that. So anyway. That's, that's, that's awesome. And I, I'm looking forward to getting the data back that you guys are still, still in the process of collecting. Right, right. Um, and, and this is just, a, just an innovative idea. And uh, really, uh, th thank you for bringing it to the attention of me and the MedicCast audience. Right. Well, thanks, Jamie. I appreciate it.
Where can folks find out more about what you what you're doing over there in emergency products and research? Um, right now, we don't have we don't have anything on a website yet because this is happening so fast. Okay. Um, there will be stuff on a website here soon. Uh, well, I would, you have Mustang and, and the other stuff on there. Right. Well, so, yeah, we don't. Right. But With you don't have the stuff, stuff yeah, So there. you're gonna see. You can go to our our website at www.epandr. So ep and r. dot com. Um, I would also encourage you to go to our Facebook page, okay. uh, which is facebook.com forward slash EMS gear. So E M S G E A R. Okay. You can also follow us on Twitter at EMS gear. Okay. So um, I would encourage everybody to go to our Facebook page and keep track of everything that's going on. If there's any questions directly, you can always call me at 610-357-3226 or um, by email at jasont at epnr.com. Excellent. So, we'll have links to all that in the show notes good, for people. Good. Um, Jason, as always, it's a pleasure to have you on and talk about some of the cool stuff you're involved with. It, you always seem to be uh, coming up with the next thing. <laughs> trying. 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 Well, it's a lot it, of work. It succeeded again as far right, as I'm right. concerned. Great. So that's really Great. cool. Um, thanks a lot, sir, and I appreciate you coming on. Thanks, Jamie. All right. See you. And I want to thank all of you. Make sure you check out more segments like this one from EMS World Expo 2014 in the Physio Control Podcast Studio. And we want to thank all of you. You can check all of that out over at mediccast.tv. I'm Jamie Davis, the Pod Medic, reminding all of you to remember scene safety, BSI. <laughs>